what it is, y'all, and you will probably notice a slight difference in our structure here. I told you I would give you guys one team, one team to rule them all. And well, today we're going to talk about that. Now, I actually have two, if I'm completely honest. Uh, but this team I'm going to show you right here is probably a team that a lot of people can assemble. Um, if you've been playing the game and listening to what I've been telling you for any length of time, this is a team you can easily, easily produce. And I'll even give you a couple of, uh, of extras here. Now, we're going to go into 1-9, because that's arguably the hardest one right now. And here we go. The Fire Team. And it is a mix of AoE and Single Target. Now, the one thing you remember when you're doing single target is when you're in an AoE fight, just target a different foe every single turn. It's really that easy. There's not a whole lot to it. When you're using the AoE units and single target attacks, just focus on their third skill and focus on your single target units uh, SA. It's really, really, really that easy. Like, I can't emphasize enough how simple this actually is to work. Now, I'm going to go ahead and showcase the team real quick. Of course, as always, we have Lina with a 33% SA gauge charge coming in turn 1 and leaving turn 2. We also have Finn, the assist on her that does literally the same thing. Super easy, super important, get him, get out, move on with your life. Now, when she leaves, she's going to bring in for me, Reveria. Now, a lot of people were like, why are you using Reveria? Well, my honest answer to that is to get a faster kill. So what I do is I bring her in and use skill 1 to give herself 100% SA gauge charge. Doesn't sound like it does a whole lot, but it does more than you realize. Basically, just this one turn of her getting that is the difference between getting my double SA on turn 5 versus turn 6. Now, sometimes it still happens on turn 6, but she will ensure that you get a much faster kill. And I'll make one little amendment here. You could add on to this team, like I've got Asfi here for the single target damage, um, and she's got a really good physical skill, which is why she's here. If you really, really, really want to go nuts, you could remove her. As much as it might detriment you a little bit in the single target fights, you're still going to beat it by nine turns. And what you can do is you can come down here, and you could throw on this Seer. This Seer will give anybody she's tied to 100% SA gauge charge. And in fact, if you're really going to do this right, take uh, take Osfi out, put the AoE Hestia here where Osfi is, and then put that Casino Seer on Harahime. They're a great combo. Harahime comes in with 100% SA gauge charge while everybody has 33. It's another option, but not everybody's going to have her. So I'm going to focus on more units that are recent and that more people are going to have. Now, this is... I won't call it a whale team because a lot of these units have been around for a long time. If you guys were here during the anniversary, you probably have the physical Elise. If you don't, that's fine. Pick another AoE fire unit. The main reason she's here is because she's a very good AoE fire. And there's a lot of AoE fire in the game. You can definitely pick anybody in that realm and you'll be just fine. If you're new at the game, uh, you might not be able to build this team necessarily. But some of the free-to-play units we've showcased would not make bad uh, 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 alternatives here only and the reason I say that is because with this team we're generally killing in like turn six turn seven like we're wiping the units out and she has a really good SA but I'm not using it ever in these fights literally she's just here for either the AoE or the single target attack because she's very good at both so you can substitute her for any single AoE fire that's at least like recent in the game that will do a decent amount of damage um, lead on the other hand lead I think is integral to this team uh, lead is very good he hits really hard he's an absolute unit he's got an extra attack here which I'll be honest most of my runs I didn't actually use just you know to speed run the things um, but if you get his extra attack off you remember rebuff that he's gonna do really 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 awesome damage um, the main thing here is his SA his SA is an ultra fire physical attack with temporary great strength boost Ultra and Guard Right and Self, Strength and Fire Attack Damage 80%. We're going to use that as the number one DPS, SA at least, on AoE, AoE fights. And the reason we're going to do that is simply because he's going to get a crazy huge buff. Now, of course, we're also double SAing with Haruhime. And I think Haruhime really needs no introduction. But if you don't understand why, number one, she does a 40% debuff. Number two, she does like this really awesome heal. She does counter healing. But number three... Her SA is 100% strength and magic. 
So really awesome unit that. Absolutely awesome unit. Now the kind of wild card on this team is my single target. And I'm going to wager that most people watching this probably do not have this unit. Katori was from the... Um, the Data Life crossover, which actually reran, it was actually she's actually from the rerun specifically, uh, that reran a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago. So most people watching this probably will not have her or even have her maxed. If you do not have her, that's fine. There's any any number of single target fire units that you can utilize. Uh, case in point, this Riveria, very good unit. Uh, you would need to add some magic to your team and kind of uh, asso uh, associate that, but I'll show you one way you can do that. Um, so she's very good. I tried working with Tioni, and she actually didn't work very well because she does require your opponent's buff strength and magic, and ours really haven't been doing that much. Uh, but Wealth, Wealth would be another really good one, and he does 33% as he gets charging. So you have any number of single target units you can throw there in slot four and be just fine. Or, or... If you don't have the right units, use the support button here and use this button intelligently to try to come up with somebody that might help you out. Uh, if you're lacking in units, if you're just really lacking in that really critical spot, um, I know me personally, I'm actually running uh, lead, the lizard man on there, I'm running him as my support unit. So if nothing else, maybe find somebody that's got him, ask them to run him as support and utilize that and you will be able to basically beat this much, much, much faster. Having support here in the EX missions is just one thing I can't stress enough. You mustn't overlook. Now, so we've got basically Lina coming in for the 33% as they get charged. Riveria coming in for herself 100%. You can actually exchange her with anybody that is like debuffing or buffing. It's just my team does all the buffing and debuffing that I'm ever going to need in this fight. And then finally in the last slot is Haruhime. Now, assist-wise, oh, of course, DPS-wise, we've got lead as the main AoE DPS, Katori as the main single-target DPS, and we've got a good AoE in the center. If you basically assemble your team with a really good AoE DPS and a really good single-target DPS with a respectable unit that kind of does okay in both realms, you're going to be just fine. Like, that is going to be it. Now, I am going to go ahead and say you need these units max limit broken. That is the one caveat to this. You need the max limit broken because we're bringing Haruhime, Haruhime in late and we need to make sure that we have enough defenses on these units that we don't have to use a defensive assist, that we don't have to use a, 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 a debuffing or buffing or you know anything like that right out of the gate. We're coming in strong and hard. It's the one biggest difference in this fight versus our other fights. Now, assist-wise, of course, we've already talked about Finn there in the front. I'm running Apollo on lead, and that is a very good combo. It's a very common combo for me because all allies get strength plus 15%. That means all my all my units are physical. I don't have any magic units on here, but I will cover something for magic here in a moment. And then we do fire uh, and light resistance down 15%. The really nice part about this is there's also a light team you can run here, which is literally the same. One really good single target, two really good AoEs, and almost identical team. Like, the assists are almost perfectly identical here. And you could just kill it as well. It'd be awesome. Uh, I might assemble that team and showcase that team later if you guys really want to see the light team that does it, uh, but that is another option. Now, that's that's lead. Then we're going to talk about Osfi. Now, Osfi is the one that I said is variable on this team. She is really good uh, single target attack damage unit. Uh, basically, her foe's skill here will drop single target resistance uh, by 20%. Basically, not, not really resistance, basically she just encouraged, like she basically makes sure that everybody does 20% more damage on your foe. If you don't have her or you don't have a good single target or you want to use the Casino Seer, that's another option. I would take her out and leave uh, Hestia on here. Now that does mean your single target fights are going to go a little bit longer, probably another turn, but we're killing things so quickly, it really doesn't matter, okay? Now, Ares is a staple of this team. Ares does physical and uh, uh, physical resistance and penetration rate down 20% and critical rate down 20%. But main thing is that physical resistance down 20% is going to allow our physical units to do more damage. If you assemble a magic team, and I would say if you're making the light team, the light team would be a magic team. We would swap him out. Let's go down here for Colonel Demeter. Literally, we'd use Colonel Demeter instead and she'd be golden. Okay, so that's your magic unit. Now, here's the fun part. 
I actually have this wealth only like level 60. He's got no bonds in him, nothing. He'd be really good if I did have him bonded because he's the only uh, fire attack damage 20% that we have. But I'll say this. It's only because I'm using Katori that I'm using him. If you have a, like a magic unit there, like you use the Fire Riveria, you can come down here and you can grab. No, that is not what I wanted by a long shot. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go re-put uh, wealth on here. You can come down here and grab this Hephaestus. She does magic plus 20. Once again, like I said, if you're using magic units, you want to use this unit. And she does fire and water attack damage plus 15%. So a very, very, very good assist for that realm. But I'm going to go back and use Bet. Only because I notice he's on a sack. When you have a unit that's level 60, you want him on a sack. Because how little health and defense they're going to give your unit. Um, there is a possibility Riveria could die because of this. But I'm going to cover that when we get into the actual fight here. Finally, AoE Hestia. And like I said, if you don't have AoE Hestia, just any AoE unit will do. And if you don't, you know, if you're if you uh, are going to go with a Casino Seer tactic, then take Hestia, put her where Asvi is, and put Casino Seer here. You'll be good to go. Now, equipment. Obviously, for our, our team here, we're going to want basically the best equipment for the job. And to do that, you're going to be using... Stun anklets. Stun anklets on every single fight. With one exception, and that's the fight we're going to do today. This is the only fight, the only fight, where you're going to need a seal. There we have a stun, stun. We're going to need seal anklets. Seal anklets are going to be imperative to just this fight that we're going to do today. So I'm going to swap that out on everybody really quickly. Uh, won't take very long, but like I said, if you're doing every single other fight, just do stun for the one fight I'm going to show you here. This is the one exception to the rule that you will need seal for that one. So let's go ahead and do this by ornament. Uh, that is seal. Where's our other seal? There's another seal. Ooh, that is level 60. Oof. Uh, this is probably not going to be pretty because you need these ascended. If you don't have them ascended, I think you can still do it, but you need to make sure your units are very, very well leveled up. Where are all my seal anklets? Okay, he's got a seal anklet. That's good. And Harahime will get one as well. And I want to again, once, you know, just because I'm doing this and I know somebody's going to get confused, I want to say once again, you need stun on everybody for everything else. Seal will be fine for this. Now I could put seal on, or I could put a level 60 on Harahime only because she's going to be doing all this uh, healing. Um, I don't think I have to worry about her too much, but realistically, I should have these max ascended, and I, I simply don't, and I don't have time to do it before I record this video. So just know that some of my pitfalls might be because of that. So every other fight, you're gonna do level, you're gonna do level 90 stun anklets or some kind of anti-stun, but really want to love level nine stun anklets to really make it the best of the best. But this fight right here, you need seal you absolutely need seal so let's jump in here and let's talk about this one very 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 specifically because this is the one exception not the rule so we're gonna do 33 percent sa gauge charge it is a single target fight so i will talk more about the single target realm but just understand that basically uh when you're in these versus the aoe's the aoe's you're going to focus on basically attacking one unit at a time with uh, uh just basically clicking on a different unit each and every time. So you kind of balance out that single target damage that they're doing. Here comes Reveria. Now, like I said, if Reveria dies, she has a, a level 60 assist on her. If she dies, I'm going to show you at the end how I'm still mitigating that and getting the S clear. But let's see what happens with her real quick. Everybody else is going to move on to skill 2. That is basically going to continue our buff stack. Katori, on the other hand, her skill 2 is not going to be utilized, I don't think. So we're going to use her skill 3. Now, basically, she's an exception to the rule, but you always want to go in here with a strong, like, basically secondary attack. Do your main buff stacks, and then get into your DPS skills. All right? So, in this case, since we're single target, we'll do our third skill with everybody, and that is everybody's single target attack. Harahime is going to come in. I will go ahead and debuff. Sometimes I don't, uh, but I feel like with him, we kind of need to. Because he can hit pretty hard and it would suck. Okay. He hit for zero that time. So that's good. And he's going to do this. Which I believe that's actually just a percentage hit. 
if I recollect. I think that's literally just a percentage of your, of your health. So, yep. And notice that did not feel good. Had I not done Haruhime's debuff, we'd be in a bad, bad, bad state there. Most of the other fights I actually have found, I think with, with him and I believe 1-9 were the only two where I actually had to do the debuffs. But it really doesn't hurt anything, any way to do it. Uh, it just delays our healing one turn. So, uh, with lead, I am going to go ahead and rebuff his extra attack. Uh, she does not get an extra attack, so she can continue doing her basic stuff. And we're going to work up to the double SA with Katori. And we'll kind of talk about that here in a moment. Now, remember I did say, like, kind of the a not fun situation here is when we don't get a lot of counters. Counters are going to be really, really, really important. And I hate to say it, I actually may, for this one, go back and put level 60 on everybody instead of the level 90 equip. Uh, just because I think the debuffing might be too much. Uh, the problem is then you're going to run into problems with his SA. But we really, really, really need counters on this one. And not having counters might cost us. So let's go ahead and go back to skill 3 with uh, lead. I'm going to go ahead and buff our critical and penetration. I'm sorry, counter and penetration rate. Uh, but the main thing is here we just really need to take some damage in order to do counters. Guard rate good. But we're not getting counters, which is going to drag this fight out. So let's go ahead and do our double SA. Haruhime and Katori. Now, like I said, in an AoE, I would do Haruhime and lead. Uh, but the main reason, once again, for that is the fact that this is going to be our, our best DPS and for single target. And this gives everybody 100% strength and magic. So here we go. All right. And Katori is going to do her thing. 1.6 mil. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like to see that. All right. And we're still not taking damage, which is bad. So once again, this might be the rare exception of the rule where my, my units might be too tough. I say as we're about to take damage on this SA, but let's see here. Yeah, see, it's like basically blanket amounts of damage that we're taking. Whereas if we can make it so we're taking single target attacks every single time, that would be extraordinarily helpful. I'm not going to lie, I am a little worried we're not going to beat him in nine turns. But once again, with the other fights, we'd be done by now. With the other fights, we're done at this point. There is no turn eight. There's barely a turn seven if there is one. Um, this is just kind of the harder one, which is kind of why I wanted to showcase it. So here we go. And the main thing is here, it's because we're not getting counters. If I'd been getting counters this time, he'd probably be dead by now. Like I would not be sweating this if we'd gotten counters. The fact that we're not getting counters does definitively suck. And actually what I might wind up doing is taking my AOE assist off. And putting on Casino Seer so we get a little bit faster SA gauge charging. In fact, I think that might be what I have to do to get the S clear on this. But let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get it! Counter! Counter! No, we're not getting counters. See, and this is what I'm saying. If we had gotten counters, this would have been in the bag. This would have been a done deal. So we're on turn 10. So let's go one more time and I'll kind of show you the Casino Seer tactic. Uh, just because it does get faster SAs out. So let's go in here. Go down here, and let's snag her. If you have this unit, she's a great unit. Uh, we don't really need any kind of... And, and once again, like I said, I, unfortunately, I think I've ascended all of my my uh, my anklets that I'm not using. So it's one of those... Like, I know some of them were level 60, some of them were not. I, I just haven't figured out a way to let this guy do damage. Aside from not debuffing with Haruhime, which I kind of feel like when he does essays would be a death sentence. So, I don't know. Let's see. We could also try that. We'll try not essaying with Haruhime, or not debuffing with Haruhime and just see what happens. So, here we go. As I said, this is my last one. Everything else, I mean, I know that there was the one A clear back there, but that's not what I'm worried about. That's going to be super duper simple. Uh, let's go see. Okay, we're going to use her 100%. Once again, like I said, if you need an extra debuff, you can use that slot for an extra debuff. I'm just using it to get a little faster SA gauge charging. Here we go. And here comes Haruhime. And I'm actually going to go ahead and avoid doing her debuff here just to see if we can 
get a little tiny bit extra damage out. All right. Boom. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Okay. Actually, hilariously, her debuff did nothing on that. Like I said, it's a percentage. I really thought the debuff would do something there. But now we'll actually get counters, so that's going to be really nice. So we'll continue. I'll have to rebuff his uh, skill one. There we go. So now, see, now we're getting the counters. Now we're getting counters, and we might actually be able to get this done pretty quickly. So we still didn't crack a turn five double SA. I think I know why not, but that's okay. We can work on that. Uh, let's go ahead and... Yeah, we'll continue doing Yosuga. We'll go ahead and do skill three. Boom. Let's go. And you will notice we're really, really, really close to a triple essay. But a triple is not really what we're going for here. So this is actually really nice. I, I thought by not debuffing we'd be doing a little bit more. So I have actually learned something in the process of making this video. But let's go ahead and do our double SA here. Boom. And those of you wondering why we're not doing something that would like encourage a combo attack or anything like that. Combo attacks really don't do a huge amount of damage. Getting more essays off with Katori is going to be better. And notice the power, the sheer power of uh, getting some uh, counters. So that is really, really, really critical. There's not really much shame, honestly, in just letting things happen like this. Uh, if you are taking damage, that can be a good thing like, you, like I've notated here. So let's go ahead and double... I say rebuff his skill one. And there we go. That is a done deal. Now turn eight, we'll do an SA and let everybody kind of do their skills. Boom. Not quite a mill. What in the happy Hades? Girl. Girl. You were sub you were the chosen one. Nah, eh, whatever. Oh, he's dead next turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is a little sloppy. Um, this foe is a little tricky. I, I wish I could have gotten a little more out of him. Um, maybe there's no, because all the weapons are maxed. Um, just just weird. It should have been a turn eight kill, but whatever. We got turn nine kill. Now the one thing I will say here, if like, in the situation with Riveria, there is a situation, like I said, where she might have died. But if we go out here... Okay, let's just go ahead and skip that. Our clear conditions are clear within nine turns, clear without losing any member. And kind of like if you notice down here, clear without losing any member is the only one I've actually missed on this. Uh, with the teams I was showing you before, the, the, the free-to-play teams, if you're able to do it like I was able to do with most of these and clear without losing a member... All you need to do is come back and do the nine turn win. So if you're having a really hard time with one of your units, like in my case, Reveria died on a few of these fights, like case in point, one nine. She croaked on one nine here, but I still got the S clear because I was able to clear that with the free to play team without losing any member. All I needed to do was get the clear condition of win nine times. You don't have to do all three of these in one turn. If you're just looking for the S clear, Build a team that can do it, and it doesn't matter if they do it in 20 or 30 turns, so long as they do it without losing a member, that's important. Then come back with your beefy team, and even if your, like, sack unit croaks, or let's say for the sake of argument you don't have this, the swap anklets like I do, and you set units up to, you know, croak after a turn or two, then you can come back in and get the 9 turn kill, and worry about all the other, uh, basically worry about the, uh, the lack of, of a loss of a unit later on. So you could do all three of these separately in different missions and still get the S-Clear. I can tell you that because 1-9 is exactly why I did that. Riveria died, but I still got the condition because when we did the test run, we did it without. So there you go, guys. That is the one team to rule them all. There's a light team you can build there as, as well. I believe there's even a wind team that would be pretty respectable. So there's one for every, I won't say every single a, uh, element, not by a long shot, because there's some elements that really need big buffs. But any element that you've got that's doing really, really well, most likely will have a team you can build with that. So, 
take this lesson. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I will be back with more Damachi uh, very soon.